there we go i'm hitting all the buttons pretty good i guess and <laughs> do some screen sharing with you guys tonight but uh tonight we're going to talk about inquiring of the lord i really believe it's a lost concept uh with us in the body of christ today and, and you know when i posted this i asked the question who is your source and i don't know if you guys watch the courtrooms of heaven page like i do and the co-leaders do but but lots and lots and lots of people come in and they're asking uh, man how to do things and to me it 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 is it we we're there to help but it becomes frustrating because you have this sense be, they're not they're not inquiring of the lord first and i believe there's several reasons maybe maybe why uh i believe maybe they're they don't really know god uh, they don't have that intimate personal relationship uh they may be so used to going to man for the answers maybe fivefold ministry their pastors or whatever uh and they've been satisfied there uh they may be afraid of what God says. I had a good friend uh, contact me a couple of weeks ago and he said, Terry, I don't know if I want to hear from God. I don't, it's like, I'm afraid of what he'll say, you know? And it's like, well, that's kind of the wrong mentality to have talking to our creator. He might share some things that make you change. And so people are comfortable. They're familiar where they are and they, they don't like the boat rocked, you know, and they, they, they don't want to get out of the boat and they they're they're conformed to their their way they do everything and you know i put a post out earlier that said uh you know the lord spoke to me a couple of years ago and he said that uh, the same thing holds true today as when israel crossed over the jordan river into the promised land what happened was two and a half tribes chose to stay in the wilderness gad reuben and half the tribe of manasseh and he said the same thing is happening today that that uh, uh, although there were things in the in in the wilderness that that was was suitable for them for uh, uh, farming and raising uh, cattle and stuff like that the herds uh, but it's like you know I've been thinking it's like what did you like about the wilderness you know why are you why do you want to stay in the wilderness there's nothing attractive in the wilderness to me. I want the promised land, but they chose to stay in the wilderness probably because of their familiarity and, uh, you know, their fear of the unknown in the new era of, uh, or the new move of God uh, that he brought them into, that he's bringing us into. And so I can understand why uh, they chose to stay there, but I'm a forerunner. I like, I like, I like constant change. I have to, I thrive on change. I like, uh, moving from glory to ever increasing glory. So I want to experience, even though I don't know and understand uh, the things I'm coming into a lot of times, I want to begin to, to, to move into the new by faith. And so uh, we're looking at things there that, that tonight we're going to connect the dots uh, uh, between the operating in the courts of heaven, governing creation, sonship and identity, knowing what's on our scrolls and, and and uh, uh, the boop, loop, uh, excuse me, the blueprints of walking that out uh, of what's written on the scrolls, and so it's it's pretty interesting and amazing that what what we've been seeing and hearing from a lot of prophetic voices is that we're entering into a season of what no eyes seen, no hear, no ear heard, or mind conceived the things he's planned for those who love him. And so we have to, I, I'll go back up and I'll share uh, about a dream I had uh, several years ago. It kind of shaped everything about me and what I do in the ministry. Uh, I was standing at the shore of a raging river. It's probably, you know, over a football field length to cross it. It was just raging. It was flood level stage. And I knew I couldn't cross the river. And but I looked over across to my right and I saw this huge interstate bridge being built. It was under construction and thousands upon thousands of people standing at the uh, at the bridge waiting to cross over. But I was standing over to the 
to the left of that. And the Lord said, take a leap of faith. I go, well, I can't, I can't jump across that river. I can't walk on water, you know? And, and all of a sudden he said, back up, take a few steps and take a leap of faith. So I said, okay, I'm just going to go for it. So I did. And I, I just, boom, I was gone. And I, and I landed over on the other side safe, you know, it was, you know, over a football field long and I'm going, wow, that was cool. I did it. You know, well, what the Lord showed me out of that, he said, Terry, where you just came into was the promised land, the new era of, of the body of Christ, where I'm moving into back where you came from was the wilderness and that you had to go into the, the, uh, promised land to experience, to encounter, to engage what is there, to learn about what's there, uh, so that you can teach the people uh, and become this the bridge that allows the other people to come and cross the river in safety. And so the bridge, you know, is built. It was kind of a stone bridge, and and I believe I'm not the only one that provides the the you know part of the building of the bridge. Uh, but several of us, maybe you, are a forerunner too, and that you're part of that bridge that helps the others cross over. So, uh, uh, you know, I've kind kind of a, a a bridge between the church age and the kingdom age, and talking about uh, helping people get across over into the the new era of the body of Christ is is quite interesting and sometimes frustrating frustrating, sometimes disappointing, and say, come on, can you get it? We can just get a hold of what, what God's doing. And, you know, if they knew God, they would, I think. And, and if they really had that intimate relationship with him, they, they, would, they would probably, more of them would probably take that leap of faith. And so uh, uh, here we are back in uh, this phrase, this, this inquire of the Lord phrase has been huge in my spirit for, for, you know, several weeks and months. And, and, you know, talked to Timothy Bentz about it. I talked to others about it and I thought, you know, I need to do a broadcast on that because that's stern in my spirit that we need to begin to engage and inquire of the Lord like, again, like we never had before uh, so that we can understand and know uh, the path, the blueprints, and that, that uh, what the Lord says about individual things. So I pulled up a lot of scriptures. I just did a word search in Bible Gateway and come up, uh, just inquire is what I typed in and got a lot of scriptures. And I was just highlighting some of the, the main ones. And, and I want to just go over some of those. And I just want to say, uh, as we go through this, uh, if you have something you'd like to share, just jump in and you're not interrupting me. If you have a revelation you want to share or, or anything that, that's pertaining to what we're talking about, just jump in. You're free here. It's an it's a interactive thing. That means you guys are part of it, too. And so let me pull up here, screen share, and, and uh, get what I've uh, got here for you. All right. There it is. Here's some of my research. And uh, can you guys see that? I hope you can. Uh, maybe if you're on your cell phone or something, you might not be able to see it, but, uh, just a scriptural search of, of, of the word, this is highly scriptural. And I want to begin to share with you what the Lord revealed to me. There's some consequences of, of inquiring of the Lord, both good and bad. The bad consequences, if we don't inquire of the Lord is not real good. And, uh, uh, very severe. And so that put a fear of God in me that I need to begin to inquire of the Lord more than what I've been doing. And I'll show you why in some of these scriptures here in a minute. And, you know, let's just relate this to, you know, the courts of heaven and governing creation and our own individual lives. And, and, but like we did the other night with the glory, let's make this a court case How about that. Uh, because there's been some situations in our life where we haven't inquired of God so much. We've been, our source has been man. And we made man an idol. We made somebody in ministry an idol. Uh, 
and we were afraid of going to the Lord for uh, our, our answers first and foremost. We wanted a quick fix for man. We didn't want to take the time to to seek him out and inquire of his wisdom. And, and uh, so let's just engage the courts here for a minute and, and uh, we'll step in. Father, we just bless and honor you as creator of all things in heaven and earth. Father, we thank you for your majesty and your splendor. We just worship you and we praise you. Father, your word says we enter his gates with thanksgiving and we enter your courts with praise. Father, we worship you, who you are. Father, our creator, you created us as legislative and judicial sons, manifest sons, Father, that as he as you are, so are we in this world. Jesus was the firstborn of many. Father, we thank you that we are uh, uh, just like you. You created us in your likeness and image. So, Father, we just step into that uh, positional authority. And, Father, we thank you. We honor the court. We honor the blood of Jesus Christ. We're stepping in by faith. Father, we thank you that, that as we walk through this, Father, you reveal the things that uh, been withholding uh, heaven's blessing from our personal sins, even our generational bloodline iniquities, all the way back to where that sin first entered into our record and was lodged in our DNA. Father, we petition you for freedom from not inquiring of the Lord. Father, we thank you for the 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 guidance and the wisdom and the understanding and speak through me speak through us so father we'll we'll understand your heart about uh, how to inquire of you and why to inquire of you and father we submit that to you today father to for, to set us free from any of the bondages any of the curses any of the any of the restrictions and limitations that we put on ourselves and our generations put on ourselves because we did not seek you in jesus name thank you and amen so first of all, the definition just in the dictionary of, of uh, inquire means to put a question, seek for information by questioning, uh, to make an investigation or inquiry, to ask about, to search into, and to investigate. You know, the word says uh, it's the glory of God to conceal a matter and glory of kings to search it out. Well, this is part of searching it out. It's part of seeking him. And an interesting thing really began to happen as, as we process through the entire word uh, for, the, for inquire, the word inquire. It was really heavily done uh, uh, in the Torah, first five books of the Bible, and all the way through the Old Testament. But then probably from the time of Saul, King Saul, it began to kind of fade out because there was a lot of iniquity involved in, to, in it. They stopped, Saul stopped seeking the Lord. Actually, he, he said, bring me the witch, bring me the uh, witch from in, indoor. And so he began to inquire of the wrong source and it was very uh, uh, problematic for him. And so in Strong's Concordance, the Hebrew word is bakar. And it means to seek out, to look for, to make, search, to seek out in order to care for. Wow. Let's look at that personally. To care for me, to care for my family, to care for my business. Seek out, inquire of the Lord, to, to care for, for what concerns me. To contemplate, to consider, and to reflect. The primitive root of that properly is to plow, to break forth or to inspect, to admire, to care for, to consider, to make inquiry, and to search and to seek out. So there we have kind of a definition of inquire of the Lord that we can begin to see uh, a better understanding. So let's start with the scripture. You know, a lot of people talk about the, 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 the power of, uh, of the first mention in the word, and the first mention in scriptures was Genesis 25, 21 through 23. Now, as we're going through these, we want to kind of uh, uh, hopefully reveal what's going on in the courts, what's going on in our modern day life, uh, uh, how they relate to us in today's world. And so in, in this first scripture, Isaac prayed to the Lord on behalf of his wife, uh, Rebecca, because she was barren. And the Lord answered him, 
and uh, Rebecca, his wife, conceived. But the children, look at, listen to this, struggled together within her. They struggled. Uh, that's talking about uh, 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 Isaac and, uh, not Isaac, but uh, Esau and, uh, what's his name? You know, <laughs> yeah. uh, so, but the children, Jacob and Esau, there we go. Yeah, Jacob. Yeah, it's written right there. I couldn't remember. Uh, struggled together within her, and she said, if it is so, why then am I this way? So when, when she went to inquire the Lord, the Lord said, because two nations are in your womb and the two peoples will, will be separated from one body. The, the one people shall be stronger than the other and the older shall serve the younger. Now look at this in a modern day perspective. Why many times we come into the courts, we're having this incredibly troublesome time. Why is this happening to me? Why are things going this way? Why are nothing's working in my life? You get that all the time. Uh, uh, so there's this struggle within you for the, with the promise, Jacob, and uh, uh, the other side of the story was represented by Esau. They struggled together within you, and we didn't know the word because we hadn't inquired of, of the Lord yet. We didn't know his, the blueprint. We didn't know the, what was written on the scroll because we had this struggle with this. And we went into a mental place just like, just like uh, uh, Rebecca did. Why is this happening to me? She didn't know. She didn't inquire of the Lord to find out what was really happening. And all of a sudden, the Lord said, oh, Rebecca, guess what? There's two nations in your womb. <laughs> and so if we would come to the Lord and find uh, uh, our answers from him, you know, there is no man can tell you, uh, unless they're a really good prophetic uh, uh, person, there's no one that can tell you, why am I, you're asking them, why am I troubled? Why is this happening to me? There's no one that's going to tell you there's two nations in your womb. There's really no one that can tell you exactly what's going on. They can, yeah, we see it all the time on the courts page. They can give you some good ideas. They can give you some good suggestions. They can make some uh, scriptures sound good. But what's happening is we take that for, oh yeah, thank you. You know, it's good and wonderful. And I'm not saying there's wisdom in a multitude of counsel. There is, but, uh, when we tend to get that from people on Facebook that we don't know, that we don't know their fruit, we don't know their character, uh, they just show up on the Facebook group and there's lots of them that, that sincerely want to help, but a lot of times it comes from the old church age mentality, not from a uh, full understanding of the courts of heaven. In other words, they start talking about church age mentality, wilderness mentality, rather than kingdom age mentality. It's what they know. It's what they're familiar with. It's what they're used to speaking. It's a comfort, place of comfort for them. So I, I, I link that that first mention with with uh, uh, inquiring of Him to to relieve ourselves to get uh, the wisdom and understanding we need about when we come uh, before the courts or become uh, come before our friends, uh, people on Facebook. Why is this happening to me? We see it every every single day. Can you help me? This is happening to me. It's same. It's different stories over and over. Over a lot of the same stories, but uh, to me, it's. I generally don't answer them. I say, "Did you inquire of the Lord?" No, I didn't. Why don't you go back and do that? Why don't you spend a little time fasting and praying? And I, according to Isaiah fifty-eight so that the bondages will be loosed, the limitations will be loosed within you so that you can break open and begin to hear the Lord, his, his will for your life, what's written on the scrolls, and how to walk that out. We'll go into more of that as we go through the scriptures. Numbers 27, 21, but he shall stand before Eleazar, the priest, who shall inquire for him by the judgment of the Urim before the Lord and his at his command, they shall go out, and at his command, they shall come in, both he and the sons of Israel with him, even all the congregation. So it, they didn't go out just because of a, a religious tradition of maybe a battlefield mentality. We're going to go fight this devil. We're going to fight him on the battlefield. We're going to yell and scream. We're going to bind and loose. And we haven't inquired of the Lord to find out 
uh, what's going on. I uh, like that. Who shall inquire for him by his judgment of the Urim before the Lord? And so that was uh, what, ha what happened at his command. This was the answer of the inquiry. At his command, they shall go out, and at his command, they shall come in, both he and the sons of Israel with him, even all of the congregation. Pretty awesome and amazing to me. How just a simple act of inquiring God can bring forth uh, uh, freedom for an entire congregation or uh, entire nation. Deuteronomy 4, 31. For the Lord your God is a compassionate God. He will not fail you nor destroy you, nor forget the covenant with your fathers, which he swore to them. Indeed, ask now concerning the former days. That's why we talk about uh, we need to inquire of the Lord to find out where the generational bloodline iniquities are pertaining to our petition uh, that we're wanting freedom from. So ask now concerning the former days, which were before you since the day that God created man on the earth and inquire from one end of the heavens to the other. Now there's a lot of times, a lot of, a lot of training sessions that I teach that part of your legal team is, is heaven and earth, according to Deut Deuteronomy. Uh, the heavens uh, and the earth shall be a witness against you. They can also be a witness for you, but they begin to partner with you and co-labor with you in the courts and in your governing relationships with governing creation, delivering creation from the bondage of corruption and bringing heaven to earth. Heaven and earth want to partner with you. And here it says, now inquire of the heavens and begin to ask them. Begin to inquire, find out what the, you know, uh, uh, it says king of glory uh, Psalm 19 says the heavens declare the glory of God day after day night after night speak wisdom and knowledge to us are we listening are we engaging are we inquiring of creation are we inquiring of the glory realm are we inquiring of heaven and earth most of us not but I just want to say that as we as we engage you know we just repent before that I haven't engaged that, that fullness, the full realm of what Yahweh wants us to begin to uh, co-labor with. I like the word co-create with. Uh, it seems more powerful, and that's ac actually what we're doing. Uh, that we haven't done that. We're just beginning to learn how to do that. So what I've been doing and practicing in my own life is just practicing, engaging. Same way we learned in the prophetic church was involved in prophetic ministry 20 years of my life and uh, we said our spiritual senses are exercised by reason of use so we pertain that uh, just to the prophetic ministry but what about engaging creation what about engaging god for for what's written on the scrolls inquiring of god for because he's not going to always speak to us it is written, ba 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 ba. It's going to begin to come from you, from creation. It's going to come from you, from all kinds of different sources. What, what uh, the answer from inquiring of the Lord can be? Let's see. Has anything been done like this great thing, or has anything been heard like it? As has any people heard the voice of God speaking from the midst of the fire? Does the midst of the fire speak? Well, apparently so, as you have heard it and survived. How about that? Uh, Deuteronomy 12, 29, 31 says, When the Lord your God cuts off before you the nations which you are going in to possess or dispossess, and you dispossess them and dwell in the land, beware that you are not ensnared to follow them, and they are destroyed before you, and that you do not inquire after their gods. How many times in our generational bloodlines has our, have they inquired after gods, other gods? Well, probably our generational bloodlines are loaded with that happening. So, Father, we just come before you and repent, Father, of our own personal sins of serving uh, or inquiring after other gods. We repent for our own personal sins, our iniquities, uh, uh, or excuse me, our transgressions and our generational bloodlines all the way back to where that record first entered into our DNA. Father, we thank you that we're set free in Jesus' name. 
How do these nations serve their gods that, that I also may do likewise? Uh, you shall not behave thus toward your uh, toward the Lord your God for every abominable act which the Lord hates they have done for their gods for they even burn their sons and daughters in the fire to their gods. That's probably applicable to what's happening today uh, with the sex trafficking. And so there are some more areas that, that we can repent of every abominable abominable I can't even say that word. <laughs> uh, that word right there, abom abominable. Yeah, there we go. Uh, things that our generations have done before the Lord. So Deuteronomy 12, uh, some worthless men have gone out from among you and have seduced the inhabitants of their city saying, let us go and serve other gods. So there's seduction in there, deception. Uh, uh, let us go and serve other gods whom you have not known. Then you shall investigate and search out, inquire thoroughly if it is true and the matter established that this abomination has been done among you. So look what's happening there. They were serving other gods, uh, uh, some that we don't even know about. We don't have this mental uh, knowledge uh, or, or capacity to know everything that's happened in our generational bloodlines uh, but we should make an inquiry of God to investigate and search out and inquire thoroughly if it is true or not because we can think a lot of things and we can hear a lot of things but we need to seek the Lord to inquire of the Lord if those things are true and the matter established that this abomination has been done among you so there is a good scripture related to uh, generational bloodline iniquities and cleansing DNA uh, as a result of what our generations did to serve other gods and seduced by others uh, to serving other gods. Deuteronomy 17 says, and has gone and served other gods and worshiped them or the sun or the moon or any other heavenly host, which I have not commanded. Uh, and if it is told you that you have heard of it, then you shall inquire thoroughly. Behold, if it is true and the thing certain, that is detestable. It's not only an abomination, but it's a detestable thing that has been done in Israel. So there's a lot of things. Sun worship, serving other gods, uh, worshiping the moon and the stars, the heavenly host, uh, maybe the, not the Maseroth, but the, the uh, uh, astrology uh new age uh things that's probably in our generational bloodline iniquity so father we repent of that of our own personal sins and our generational bloodlines father in jesus name deuteronomy 17 if any case is too difficult for you to decide between one kind of homicide or another between one kind of lawsuit or another and between one kind of assault or another, being cases of dispute in your courts, then you shall arise and go up to the place where the Lord chooses. So you shall come to the Levitical priest or the judge who is in office in those days, and you shall inquire of them, and they will declare to you the verdict in the case. So look what's happening. Uh, we come into the courts. And a lot of people go, I don't know what to do here. I don't, I, I don't know how to operate in the courts. I'm a newbie here. It seems too difficult. And I've got all these things piling up in my life, all these things going crazy, uh, going to hell in a handbasket, kind of, so to speak. And all these things, of demonic attacks, one kind of assault, demonic attacks against you, uh, so much so that you're so overwhelmed that, that you don't know what to do. Uh, so arise and go up to the place where the Lord God chooses. You know, where is that place? Well, he has to choose it. He has to, you have to find out from him. You have to inquire of him. So you shall come to the Levitical priest or the judge who is in office in those days, and you shall inquire of them, and they will decide to you the verdict in the case. You shall do according to the terms of the verdict. That's huge. I never, I didn't even see this scripture before about related to the courtrooms of heaven. Uh, but once you get your verdict, once 
you inquire of the Lord and you have the, the, the petition for the Lord and all the evidence that's against you and all the evidence that's, that you present to the judge, he's going to declare a verdict. And then what you have to do, you have to walk that out according to the terms of the verdict. Whatever the terms of the verdict are may be different for you than they are for me. That is what we engage by faith to begin to enter in and walk out the verdict by faith according to what, what the judge has declared to you, the terms of the verdict. And, uh, and uh, in, the, in uh, uh, the place which the Lord chooses, so doing where he wants you to do it, how he wants you to do it, when he wants you to do it, and you should be careful to observe according to all that they teach you. So it's not, it's not moving and doing what you want to do or going back to what you did yesterday before you engaged the courts. It's following, uh, it's following this principle here about uh, walking out the verdict in your case. I love that scripture now. I didn't even know it was there for, for up until the other day. Judges 1, now it came about after the death of Joshua and the sons of Israel inquired the Lord saying, who shall go up first uh, for us against the Canaanites to fight against it? And so you look at that in a battlefield, church age battlefield mentality. We didn't do that. We just rushed into the battle. And it's almost like putting the cart before the, uh, before the uh, horse uh, the first is, he shall judge, I can't remember the scripture, but it's in my notes. He judges and then makes war. And so you operate in the course of heaven first, and then you, you can go to war. And that's what's happening here. They inquired of the Lord saying, who shall go up first uh, for us against the Canaanites to fight against them? Our mentality is just rush into the battlefield, fighting on the enemy's terms, where he knows how to hook you in and get you sucked into uh, constant state of uh, 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 destruction. And so uh, we need to take a moment before we engage the courts to inquire of the Lord uh, if we should even go to the courts. Most of the times it's okay uh, for ourselves in the mobile court, like Nina teaches. But in example, for uh, this is regarding the nation, this is regarding the nation of Israel. And so what about America? Do you have the authority? Do you have legal standing to, to engage in the courts on behalf of American issue? Maybe not. Being a newbie in the courtrooms of heaven, you probably don't. And so we have to be careful and inquire of the Lord before we go in. He's sovereign and he can release a, a governmental uh, mandate to you in a one-time based situation. He's done that with me in the early days. Uh, but I've learned to ask permission before I go into the courts. I definitely don't go to the battlefield to fight. And traditional church age mentality of yelling and screaming, binding and loosening, that doesn't work uh, so much. Uh, I've learned to be a governmental ambassador, legislating and being judicial from my mountain of authority seated in Christ Jesus at the right hand of the Father, uh, above that demonic hierarchy. That's what works better than fighting on the battlefield. So judges, let's move on. Inquire of God, please, that we may know whether our way, whether our way on which we are going will be prosperous. <laughs> <Woo. laughs> Have you been just following a tradition? Maybe of what you've done all your life. Maybe of, of uh, uh, let's just say working in, in, in a particular industry. Or, or a particular job uh, or, or a, your church life experience? Have you inquired of the Lord to know whether the way you are walking, what you're doing, what you're speaking, what you're thinking, your heart, attitudes, motives of your heart? Uh, are those, have you inquired of the Lord to know whether your way uh, on which you are going will be prosperous? There's a lot of things that are transitioning right now. And I speak all the time of we're engaging, we're entering into a totally new era. No eye seen, ear heard, or mind can see. We can't continue the same language that we used in the church age. Everything is shifting and we can't use the same strategies and concepts of battlefield to deal with, with uh, 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 the things that are facing the earth right now. 
they haven't been working. And we need to move into a, a higher, more effective way to operate. But we first need to know by inquiring of the Lord, I like to, let's link this scripture, Psalms 139, 23 and 24 with that. Search me, O God, know my heart. Try me. Where? Where is he trying me? In the courtrooms of heaven. Take me to the courts of heaven. Know my anxieties. That's my, my, my uh, soulish uh, ties to, to the old ways of doing things. Know, uh, excuse me, know whether our way on which we are going will be prosperous. What if he says no? What if he says no to something you're doing or saying or thinking that is in essence stinking thinking, are you gonna be willing to lay it down? Or are you gonna go, ah, that wasn't God? You know, we need to inquire of him according to Psalm 139 to find out whether what we are doing will prosper us, spirit, soul, and body. What does the word say? You'll show prosper even as your soul prospers, right? If you're walking around grumbling and complaining about everything going on in the world right now, I find so much peace and so much rest in what we're doing right now. I know the eternal perspective on what's going to happen. God doesn't do anything without significance. So what's the significance about what's happening in the world right now? I don't know totally, but I'm inquiring of him. I know part of the story, but that's another, another webinar. Uh, uh, but that's probably just a very small part. I know in my own personal life, everything that has happened, has been significant. Everything is a part of his strategy, good and bad. He allowed everything. He could stop the coronavirus with a snap of his finger if he wanted to. He could speak one word, let there be light, and all of a sudden coronavirus or, you know, the, the riots and stuff like that. Antifa would be totally smitten and destroyed. But he chose, he's chosen this to reveal things of his eternal purpose on the earth. So watch what's going to happen. It's going to be interesting. But we can't handle those things the way we used to, rushing out on the battlefield and trying to uh, do things that way. I love that scripture. Judges 28, here's some specific directions uh, about going to war. Now the sons of Israel arose when up went up to Bethel and inquired of God saying, who shall go up first for us to battle against the sons of Benjamin? Then the Lord said, oh, Judah goes first. Isn't that interesting? When we want to go, 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 we have all this zeal and compassion to cut the head off of Goliath. All of a sudden God says, wait a minute, inquire of me, who shall go up first? Maybe I'm not supposed to go up first. Maybe I am. But Inquiring of the Lord will reveal God's answer and what's written on the scrolls and how to walk that out on the blueprints of your life to know uh, specifically what to do, when to do it. Judges 20 says, uh, uh, instructions again for the second time. The sons of Israel uh, went up and wept before the Lord until evening and inquired of the Lord again. So they, that's twice in, in, in one chapter, Judges 20, twice in one chapter, they inquired of the Lord. Now this time, uh, shall we again draw near for battle against the sons of my brother Benjamin? And the Lord said, go up against them. So now it's, it's everybody go against them. Before it was just Judah. Now it's everybody go. I don't know why, but that was his specific instruction for walking out what needed to be done uh, in that particular uh, issue. Getting pretty wild. <laughs> you know, I love that because it's like, oh my gosh, how many times have I been so uh, uh, ignorant is probably a good word of uh, 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 when I didn't inquire of him, uh, even in the old battle, battlefield days, I've been in that 20 years and, and it was just, uh, seemed like we never got anywhere. We're so busy fighting devils and a uh, devil under every rock. And, you know, every time you turn around, there's another devil around there. And, and all of a sudden when we're, we're, we're learning rather than fight on the battlefield, well, why don't we inquire of God first and find out his plan for our battle? I don't even, you know, you might've heard me say before, I don't even engage the battlefield anymore. I'm above 
ruling and reigning, legislating, being a judicial son, making government of the kingdom of heaven, uh, governmental decrees that establishes uh, and order uh, the kingdom on, on the earth. I've never, since I've made that change, I haven't been to the battlefield. I, you know, Jesus said, I only do what I see my father do. And I only say what I hear my father say. So he hasn't said to me, uh, go back down to the battlefield. He says, stay up here and rule and reign as my legislative and judicial son above that hierarchy, that demonic hierarchy, where you begin to order in Isaiah 9, 6 and 7, where you begin to order and establish his kingdom through righteousness and justice. Okay, one, one Samuel, therefore they inquired further of the Lord, has a man come here yet? So the Lord said, behold, he is hiding, that was talking about Saul, behold, he is hiding himself in the baggage. So what is lost that you love? Maybe it's, maybe it's a, a, uh, uh, a personal item. Maybe it's a friend. Maybe it's a, uh, who knows what you can apply. A lot of different things can be applied to this but it's, it's revealing of something that is hidden. Maybe it's hidden revelation. Maybe it's something, uh, an, an inheritance of your family bloodline that needs to be discovered so that you can petition the courts. One Samuel, but David's men said to him, behold, we are afraid here in Judah. How much more than if we go to, to Keilah, against the ranks of the Philistines. And then David inquired of the Lord once more. David was really the, the, the guru of inquiring of the Lord. I, can't, I didn't even count how many times. I didn't put but a few scriptures here when David acquired, inquired of the Lord, but he was really after the Lord to inquire of him. Then David inquired of the Lord once more, and the Lord answered him and said, Arise, go down to Keilah, and for I will give the Philistines into your hand. So David and his men went to Keilah and fought with the Philistines. And he led away their livestock and struck them with a great slaughter. Thus David delivered the inhabitants of Keilah. So that, that's a lot of booty and plunder and spoils of war that, that didn't come. Uh, through just going to the battle. It came first from David inquiring of the Lord one more time because uh, the people in Judah were afraid. They were based in a fear-based mindset, but David knew better because he was so good at inquiring of the Lord that, hey, we need to inquire of the Lord and find uh, what God wants to do. And he said, arise and go down to Keba for I have given the Philistines into your hand. That happened many, many times in the reign of uh, David. So 1 Samuel 28 says, when Saul saw the camp of Philistines, he was afraid. There's fear again. How many of us uh, have been in fear? Uh, uh, even small things, many times a uh, uh, lot bigger things, maybe sickness or cancer or something. We've been in a fear, losing somebody in our life. Uh, but he was afraid and his heart trembled greatly. When Saul inquired of the Lord, see, this is kind of unusual. Saul inquired of the Lord. And this is uh, when he was in his good place. Saul inquired of the Lord, and the Lord did not answer him, either by dreams or by Urim by the, or by the prophets. So he was beginning to make a slide uh, because of his jealousy of David, because of his uh, rebellion, because of his uh, uh, pride and arrogance. Saul inquired of the Lord, but guess what happened? The Lord did not answer him, either by dreams or by Urim, Urim and by the prophets. So when we cease inquiring of the Lord, the Lord is probably not going to answer you when you're engaged in, in all those issues, pride and arrogance and, and jealousy, and the you know, list can go on and on and on. Uh, the Lord may not answer you when you inquire of him, and you'll not dream dreams. There's just a couple examples of of how he will reveal uh, uh, the, the results of your in, inquiry of the Lord, dreams, visions, Urim, and by uh, the prophets. And so uh, then Saul said to us, here's where he goes off. And Saul said to his servants, seek for me a woman who is a medium. Uh-oh, he gets in big trouble. That's not good. <laughs> he's, he's, he's going deeper down the rabbit hole as we speak. 
Leo, there's a woman, medium in and indoor. Yeah, it's not good for Saul from that point on. Then David, in 1 Samuel 30, said to Abathar, the priest, the son of Ahimelech, uh, please bring me the ephod. So Abathar brought the ephod to David. David inquired of the Lord, said, shall I pursue this band? Shall I overtake them? I love what this says. And he said to him, pursue for you shall overtake them and you shall surely rescue all. That's a huge statement. Courts of heaven, based on inquiry of the Lord, is going to bring a full restoration. It's going to bring a full rescue of everything that's been stolen from you. You know, the Lord told me one time, uh, I just remembered this, that I was struggling uh, when the enemies found out, I believe it was Proverbs 6, I think, that says when the enemies discover, when he's found out, he shall give back sevenfold right? But it goes on to say something more powerful. It says he may even uh, have to give the substance of his house. So I began to question what is, uh, what happens when he gives the substance of his house? We go, oh, he's got to give back sevenfold. That's all we say. That's all we quote. That's all we declare. Well, you're limiting your, 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 your restoration. After a couple of years, the Lord said to me, I kept inquiring of the Lord, God, what does this mean? What are you trying to share? He said, Terry, what that means is when you discover that how he's affected your generational bloodlines all the way back to where that sin first entered, he has to give back the booty and the plunder and the spoils of war that he's stolen from your entire generational bloodline all the way back, all the way back, beyond sevenfold. He has to restore the booty and the splendor and the spoils of war all the way back to where that first entered into your record. Isn't that amazing? I love that. Uh, let's see. Second Samuel. And when you get a hold of that, your courtrooms of heaven cases will be much uh, broader and deeper when you know that the enemy has to give the substance of his house. <laughs> when he discovers that, it go, uh oh, they know. Uh, Second Samuel, uh, and then it came about afterwards that David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up to one of the cities of Judah? And the Lord said, Go up. So, David, where shall I go up? And he said, Hebron. So, there's some specific instructions there. Uh, he said, Shall I go up to one of the cities of Judah? And God said, Yeah, go up. So, David said, I inquired again, you know, where shall I go up? To Hebron. And so, Many times, you know, just like in the prophetic, we see a vision, we hear a word, and we stop right there. When David said, oh, wait a minute, I need to know where I need to go up to. I need to know, know more about what you're showing me uh, rather than just going up. I need more. I'm diving in deeper. I'm inquiring of you, God, to go deeper. So David said, where shall I go up? Go to Hebron. So David went up there, and his two wives also, Ahinoam, uh, the Jez Jezreelitess and Abigail, the widow of Nabal, the, the Carmelite. And pretty amazing how we stop. We tend to stop at the first answer. We should go in, if it's not clear, if it's not uh, totally understood, inquire again. There's no, I don't think there's any limit to the amount of times we can inquire of the Lord. He likes us to come to him and inquire of him, get our wisdom and revelation from him rather than from letting our source be man and causing man to be an idol to us. Second Kings, go inquire of the Lord for me and the people and all Judah concerning the words of this book that has been found for great is the wrath of the Lord that burns against us because our fathers have not listened to the words of this book and to do according to all that is written concerning us. Doesn't that sound like the scrolls of destiny? Doesn't that sound like the blueprints, how to walk those out? Go inquire the Lord and the people of Judah concerning the words of this book. Maybe the words in the Bible, maybe uh, uh, the scrolls that were written before the foundation of the world uh, that has been found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that burns against us because our fathers have not listened to the words of this book and 
to do according to all that is written. So there was rebellion. There was a there was there was a lack of inquiring of the Lord. There was there was a, uh, they didn't know what was written, so they just went went about on their own way, doing what they wanted to do. Maybe serving other gods. Maybe serving their self, their self will, fleshly desires. Let's see. First Chronicles, so Saul died for his trespass, which he committed against the Lord because the word of the Lord, which he did not keep, uh, uh, and also because he asked counsel of a medium, making inquiry of it. It's interesting, he said it, not her. Uh, making inquiry of it, and did not inquire of the Lord. So there's a list of sins right there. He didn't keep the word. Uh, he didn't, he asked counsel of the medium, make an inquiry of the medium. And he didn't inquire of the Lord. Therefore, he killed him and turned the kingdom to David, the son of Jesse. Uh, let's see, this one, go up, David again, go up, I will give you them into thy hand. David inquired of, again, a second time of God. And God said to him, go not up after them. See, he was just going in. He said, go, I'll give them to your hand. But this time he said something different, different instruction. David inquired again of God, and God said to him, go not up after them. Turn around, turn around them and come upon them opposite the mulberry tree. So totally different strategy that God revealed uh, through his inquiry. And it shall be when thou hearest the sound of the marching of the tops, there's creation partnering with, with uh the inquiry of the Lord, then thou shalt go out to battle and God will have gone before uh, thee to smite the army of the Philistines. So interesting things happening in that. Job 8, and though thy beginning was small, yet thine end shall be very great. For inquire, I pray thee, for the former generation, generation of bloodline iniquity. And attend to the researches of their fathers. Wow, pretty cool. Find out what's in your generational bloodline by inquiring of the Lord. For we are but of yesterday and now knowing for our days upon the earth are shadows. So what had happened was uh, uh, them not seeking out or inquiring about the former generation and researching what their fathers did, good, both good and bad, their days were a shadow upon the earth and not fulfilling as walking in the light. Uh, Psalm 27, four, I really like this. It's, it, we all know that one. One thing have I asked of Jehovah that I will seek after thee that I may dwell in the house of Jehovah all the days of my life to behold the beauty of Jehovah and to inquire of him in his temple. Well, we do pretty good at dwelling in the house of, of God all the days of my life, beholding his beauty of Jehovah, but we don't do so good to inquire of him in his temple. So I think when I saw that scripture, that scripture just really was the first scripture that began to draw me into uh, this inquire of the Lord thing and begin to study. And so, you know, I talked to Timothy Bence this morning. If you guys know him, I talked to him. And he said the counsel of the Lord was defiled. He had an encounter. He said he rarely has an encounter like he had last night. And he said, the Lord said to him, the counsel of the Lord is defiled. And what we began to talk about was this scripture here, Ecclesiastes 7, 10. Say not, how is it that the former days were better than these? For thou dost not inquire wisely concerning this. What? the Lord was talking about, we go into the courtrooms of heaven for our own fleshly desires, for our own wants. We haven't inquired of the Lord. We just have this need that, that we want our way. And, and sometimes maybe that seems like it's God's thing. But in essence, what happens, it has defiled the courts. And it's, it's been coming into the courts under the government of self-will that can be borderline witchcraft. And so inquiring wisely concerning our petitions before the Lord and knowing the former days uh, uh, of the good things God did for us and how we can use those in the courtrooms of heaven, 
as evidence presented on our behalf. But the main point of that was to inquire wisely concerning to avoid as much as possible going into the courts or trying to govern creation according to what we think is needs to happen. This was huge for me because I, I've been, I've been engaging creation and governing creation for a while. I'm still a newbie at it, but, but I, I feel like I've been doing that for a long time. And I knew there's been this, this incredible fear of the Lord there that if I do anything according to what I want or what I think should happen, I, 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 I want to be wise about doing those things uh, uh, because Jesus said, I only do what I see my father do. I only say what I hear my father say. I just don't want to go into, you know, he's been taking me overlooking the earth and going into some portals where, where hell has been opened up. Uh, and I've been, I've been releasing the angelic armies into those, those portals. And, and I'm just very careful about what I say and what I declare, what I decree. I want to have the mind of the Lord. And now I have a little more understanding is I need to inquire of the Lord because I, I don't want to inquire unwisely. I want to, I want to inquire wisely concerning everything I do. Does that make sense? Uh, Jeremiah 5, 50. They shall inquire concerning Zion with their faces to the word, saying, Come and let us join ourselves to Jehovah in an everlasting government that shall not be forgotten. And so they shall inquire concerning Zion with their faces lifted up, uh, not focused on the, the, the earth realm. You know, I've, I've had this thought uh, since I read that particular scripture that, that we are so occupied with our humanity and God wants us to be, be uh, uh, um, occupied, for lack of a better word, with our divinity. He says, ye are gods, John 10 and Psalm 82, ye are gods. And so he created us in our likeness and image. He created us to be ruling and reigning kings and priests. He's king of kings and lord of lords. And, and we need to begin to think uh, beyond this uh, human perspective. We need to begin to think of our, our godly perspective. And what we can do as an ambassador of heaven to bring change and transformation and restoration upon the earth. Ezekiel, I think we're getting down to the end. Let's see. And the word of Jehovah came to, unto me saying, Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their heart and put the stumbling block of iniquity before their face. Should I be inquired of, of, at all by them? Therefore speak to them and say to them, Thus saith the Lord uh, God, Every man of the house of Israel that setteth up his idols in his heart and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and cometh to a prophet, I, Jehovah, will answer him according to the multitude of his idols. Woo. Now that's, that's more. Okay, let's go back. The men have set up their idols in their heart and put a stumbling block of their iniquity. Iniquity is generational bloodline sins before the face. Should I be inquired of them uh, at all by them? The answer is no. Uh, he's not going to, just like Saul, the answer is no. You're, I'll show you an interesting scripture here in a minute. And he goes, oh my gosh. Uh, but Jehovah will answer him according to this, according to the multitude of his idols. So look back to Saul. God said, I will not be inquired by you. So do you have trouble in the courts uh, hearing from the Lord when you inquire from him? Uh, or you just rush in there and try to get done with, done, uh, with the courts uh, and, and get a quick answer? Uh, we need to begin to deal with the idols in our hearts and the idols that our generational bloodline have worshipped in our, our, our cases. Here's the scripture that really kind of shocked me, really uh, kind of related to that, like, I, Jehovah, will answer him according to this, according to the multitude of his idols. And if the prophet be enticed, shall speak a word, I, Jehovah, have enticed that prophet. And I will stretch out my hand against him, and I will destroy him for the midst of my people, Israel. And they shall bear their iniquity 
This is an interesting statement. And the iniquity of the prophet shall be even as the iniquity of the inquirer. Woo. The iniquity of the prophet shall be even as the iniquity of the inquirer. So if there is iniquity in our generational bloodlines, if there's sin in our own lives, it doesn't sound too good for us to, to inquire of the Lord. He'll probably say something like he said to Saul, I will not, I will not answer your inquiry because you haven't dealt with your, with your own personal junk. You haven't dealt with your generational bloodline iniquity. So we always say that the course of heaven is about me first, that we need to clear out our own, uh, own injustices, own, uh, issues before we begin to take on different different uh, mandates. So the iniquity of the prophet shall be even as the iniquity of the inquirer, that the house of Israel may go no more astray from me, neither make themselves any more unclean with their transgression. There's a list of stuff we can look at that's in our own life and our generations. And they shall be my people and I will be their God. All of a sudden he's a God of restoration, God of reconciliation. He's bringing his people back because we have dealt with the, the iniquity. We've dealt with the, the, uh, the, uh, the sins against us. Let's see. Uh, there it is right there. I will not be inquired of by you. Son of man, speak unto the elders of Israel and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of Jehovah, are you come to inquire of me? As I live, saith the Lord, I will not be inquired of by you. Wilt thou judge them? Wilt thou judge son of man? Cause, cause them to know the abominations of their fathers. Wow. Sounds like we need to deal with abominations of our fathers and our own personal sins before we come and inquire of the Lord. Ezekiel, you defy yourselves with all your idols, even unto this day. And shall I be inquired of you, O house of Israel, as I live, saith the Lord, I will not be inquired of you. So have we been asking the Lord and we haven't been hearing of him? I like Isaiah, just thinking about Isaiah 59. It says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, or his ear dull that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he does not hear. How about that? Amazing. So this is kind of the downside of things. But I believe we need to talk about these things so we can begin to inquire of the Lord and get clear specific instructions of him every time we go if it's the second if it's the third time every time we inquire of the lord to that we we'll begin to hear from him because we are now walking in holiness and purity and righteousness humility and love uh, we're walking in an intimate more personal relationship with him that we know him that we know uh, his ways and we know and we understand more about what's written on our scrolls and how to walk that out uh, uh, in our lives uh, from the inquiry of the Lord. Let's see. So now it begins to come back into some good things. I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it unto them. I will increase them with men like a flock. Awesome. Good stuff. Well, let's see. I've got a little bit more. Oh. Let's see. I had one more article up. Ouch. I might have lost it. We'll talk a minute. Just a couple things. Oops. Never mind. Let me get out of that. I don't know what's doing to me. I'm going crazy. Anyway, what do y'all think about that? Is it uh, kind of eye opening for you? It's a true. Let's just have a little chat for a minute. I went away for a while, and 32 people are on here. So, hey, everybody. <laughs>
Uh, to me, it really revolutionized my thought processes about everything. That I'm going to inquire of the Lord more and more uh, on a daily basis, and and that that is just before me. That I need to do. I need to do that more often. I haven't been perfect at it, and I think a lot of times through that I haven't received answers. I'm just you know maybe like a lot of you. And I feel like, you know, where is he? You know, well, I have to deal with my own junk in my trunk, uh, my own personal sins, my own uh, uh, generational bloodline iniquities where I can begin to inquire and he'll begin to answer. So I think that's really, really powerful that we can come uh, before the Lord in our holiness and our purity and our righteousness that, and he'll begin to lay out exactly what we need to do. And I think it's a lost lost uh, uh, technique, a strategy that we've lost in, in the church, that we've uh, been lazy, you know, be honest with you, I think we've been lazy. We haven't sought the Lord for a personal intimate relationship. We have uh, desired to walk in holiness and righteousness and purity. All of those things are coming back. I think it's going to be required in th these days to deal with the things we're dealing with. What no eye has seen, no ear heard, or mind conceived the things he's planned for those who love him. So we cannot continue to, to walk and live and function the way we did uh, up until today because just look around a little bit what's happening. We're not solving the issues. The church is shut down. So he's causing us to rise up as his governmental, legislative, and judicial sons to, to inquire of him to find uh, the scrolls that is written uh, uh, before the foundation of the world to deliver creation from the bondage of corruption and bring heaven to earth. So I think a beginning place is, 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 is Psalms 139, search me, O God, know my heart, uh, try me, uh, know my anxieties and see if there's any wicked way in me. Let's deal with ourselves first. We have to remove the log out of our own eyes first. Don't let pride and arrogance and a religious spirit lock you up and think it's not me uh, uh, because uh, that'll be a sure way to keep you in traditions that make the power of God of no effect. And so I always deal with myself first. I always, I always look inside first. And over this last week, I find incredible freedom and a new, new strategy has been born out of this, these three words, inquire of the Lord that I'm gonna consider doing that more and more in every situation that I have before me, not just going about what I think ought to happen, what I feel I need to do, but what the Lord says to do from the inquiry. Amen, anybody have anything they wanna share? Questions, testimonies? Yes. Okay. No? <laughs> uh, yes. I have. Uh, could I just share? I, this week, um, I um, thought I had thought I had been listening to the Lord, but uh, uh, unfortunately, I didn't. Uh, I just jumped into a situation and ended up causing myself a lot of pain and uh, discomfort because I reacted um, too quickly to a person and um, unwisely, you know, caused cause myself to beat, I beat myself up all week because I had responded uh, not in a godly way. So I wish I had been listening more to this message. If I had this message last week, I should have uh, been wiser. So um, it's, it's been a lesson for me. Yeah, well, thank you, Kathleen. I, could, I don't imagine there's a person here that hasn't made a mistake. Yes. <laughs> I, I know I have. I wish I had known this before, too, you know. Yeah. If we're honest with ourselves, we'd say, yeah, that was me before, too. I wish I hadn't done yeah. that. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, if you look at that, you know, you know, God knew what was coming today, and he knew what was uh, was going to help you to really set this locked in within yeah. your heart. 
Yes. So there's, nothing, there's nothing outside of circ or, or, uh, nothing outside of significance. When we begin to see everything, even the negative things that happen to us, he's setting us up for something. He's he's looking to to either deliver us, set us free, set the captives free, uh, 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 remove the wicked things that are in our life, and lead us in the way that's everlasting. So, even though yeah. something is really negative, I would praise God for that thing. I would, yeah, you know, because He was so <laughs> kind and so loving that He revealed that to you. A couple yeah. of days later, that, that here's here's probably some mm -hmm. answer that you need. No, I needed to hear. Yeah, I yeah. can see that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for joining us. You have challenged us again today. This is really good. Really good. I'm challenged a bit this inquiring. Uh, Thank you. You're welcome. I am too. I'm right there with everybody. It's like, oh, this got a hold of me like nothing before. And when Timothy Bent said the courts were defiled uh, from his encounter with the Lord, I go, oh, man, this is what, what we've been missing. I didn't even share that with him until he said that. I said, let me share with you what's been stern in my heart for a couple of weeks. And it was all about the inquiry of the Lord before we go into the courts of heaven, before we do anything. And so it's just revolutionized my my life to be honest with you and i hope it has yours too and that that has answered uh, a question that i've had uh, recently not not to rag on anybody or anything but if if we all of a sudden have all this information and extending and uh encounters and that I, I don't know, maybe I said, well, Lord, am I on the wrong track? Am I thinking unwisely? But why aren't we any further along seeing that maybe we could be? I said, what's it, you know, what's going on? So I think that was uh, my question there was was kind of answered. You know, there there there's a little Blue John, Papa Higgin using <laughs> Maybe there's some blue John, there's some hindrances somewhere that's not, somewhere. That, you know, allowing the fullness to be shown or seen or, or reacted or whatever. But it seems like we should be maybe a little further along, you know, yeah. and there, in every age, that's why it, to me it, it doesn't really pay to rag on the ones that are doing this or the ones that are doing that because, right. you know, all need grace and mercy and we're all growing and striving yeah you know but now there's something there's something very powerful that i missed the scripture i had in there and you know i clicked out of the out of the word document and it didn't save i hit the wrong button it didn't save but one of the scriptures was an inquire of the lord resulted in uh them david and them coming to baal perizim which was the lord of the breakthrough and so that inquiry of the lord brought uh, pave the way for the breakthrough to come. But it, it sounded like how we inquired of the Lord made a difference. If, if I'm understanding the session tonight, you know, the way, the motives, the intentions, our heart, how we inquire of the Lord, you know, makes a difference, I guess. Yeah, I believe it does too. If we're coming in, you know, like, this is what I want. I'm inquiring of you to, to, to approve what I want. And exactly. not, <laughs> I don't think that's going to work too good. And that could be possibly part of the, the, uh, the issues or, you know, or just keep inquiring, keep yeah. seeking the Lord. Yeah, I think that's why uh, the courts were defiled because we wanted our way. It was a government of self-will and, uh, you know, it has been defiling. The courts has been defiling us from operating in the fullness of the government of the kingdom of heaven yeah. as the ecclesia. And it's also teaching us our protocol, you know, that we must honor him at all times. Mm -hmm. At all times. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I posted something other uh, today uh, that said, uh, you know, the, 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 the fathers of the faith, they did something very powerful that we tend to ignore or skip over and not even think about is they began to to 
honor and acknowledge our creator and his majesty and his splendor, who he really is before they did anything. You know, you come into the, the, yes. the gates with thanksgiving and it's thanksgiving. Of praise. And if we just take a moment, yeah. you know, to, to enter into worship and, and just acknowledging without any, any uh, agenda, just begin to acknowledge who he is and worship him and praise him and, and affirm, you know, he likes to be, uh, he likes to be uh, blessed and honored. And, and uh, that to me, it, and alone, it just causes me to enter into his rest where I can be more effective in the courtrooms of heaven. If I engage in coming into the courtrooms of heaven and I'm stressed and frustrated, uh, I'm not going to be able to hear what the Lord is saying when I'm inquiring of him, either outside the courts or in the courts. Uh, I just want to go in there and get my answer, get done, and get out. You know, so this, when I start that way, uh, I, I, I honor him, he honors me, and here comes that rest and the peace of God that we need to function effectively in the courtrooms of heaven, and even when we govern creation from uh, the seat of rest. Yeah, Terry, and um, as y'all, you were speaking about the, going into worship, I thought about King Jehoshaphat. When the when the army when the people came to him and let in and, and told him that there was a great vast army coming against uh, Jerusalem and uh, Judea, and he decided he went before the Lord and he began to inquire of the Lord, but then he began to declare he was like, "But well, aren't you God of the heavens and the earth?" You know, he began to tell him who he was, yeah. and then yeah. the spirit yeah. of the Lord came up on Je one of the. Uh, I forgot his name, but came up on me. He began to prophesy. And the Lord said, this battle is not yours. This battle is, is the Lord. And so they began to stand up and to worship. I'm just making it shorter than what happened. But they began to worship God. And as they began to march out that morning, because of the worship, the people, the Moabs, the ones in Ammon that was coming against Jehoshaphat, what happened? <laughs> they destroyed each other. And when they got there, it was nothing but dead bodies. And they took out the plunder and they left. Mm -hmm. It was three days with them carrying everything that the Lord had for them. But they inquired of him and yeah. they began to worship him. And just the worship alone had begun to bring in all what they needed. Yeah, well, you know, well that's, amazing. That's, a good, that's a good point. I always thought when we're moving from glory to ever increasing glory, our, our worship is going to begin to change to be governmental. Mm, and yes, we don't have yes. that yet. And what if that was the Lord's direction just to go and worship? Mm. That's powerful stuff. Yeah, it think, was. <laughs> we have this fleshly, of the results. We have this fleshly church age agenda that we think this is the way we have to do it. This is the way we've always done it. This is the way we think it works. And we've got a few testimonies. So we're conformed to what we've been taught and trained uh, by the church age. Now it's inquire of the Lord and find out specifically my way, not the old ways that, that had little to no effect. Uh, we need to find his way. Yahweh. Amen. And there, there, again, there again, you have the praises that are, they should be issuing from a pure motive, out of, out of love, out of intimacy. And, you know, God can answer and take care of whatever our needs are just through coming, loving him, spending time with him. You know, he know, already knows we have need of, but the motives and intentions of our heart it's always crucial in whatever we are trying to. Yeah, that's why I think the church is being shaken right now. You know, <laughs> we've been taken so. outside of the building so God can redefine us. Oh, recently. yeah. Bye, in France. Think, uh, somebody had a comment. Where'd she uh, go? Hi, it's Rebecca. Rebecca, hey, Rebecca. Uh, two things. The, the Zoom, do, are we able to have access to it just to go over it again? Yeah, it's recording, so I'll have it up in the morning. Okay, fantastic. I um I had a testimony of your financial breakthrough of oh. the Seer's anointing that you did 
um, I I was, but I think I have more clarity again, able to see, because when you were saying, what can you see in the court? This time around, I was able to see uh, Abraham and David, and the Lord said to do with the business that what I'm about to go into. So they will help me to coordinate that, which I find quite interesting to say, okay, fantastic. And um, uh, um, uh, another thing I wanted to say, oh, Rebecca, what is it? Because I know I got the Sears one going through. Now, you know, when you talk about the substance and I've, you've gone to the mobile court to, to do, obviously to do all of the thing about your bloodline, so if there is still something that you have not completely asked for, do you go back to the the um, uh, do you go back to the the records to have that included, or? Yeah, we'll inquire of the Lord for that. <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, I'm being serious, but but uh, you know Robert Henderson says that uh, in his first book he said uh, uh, that any lack of kingdom manifestation is the result of a legal issue. So there's probably something that we missed in our own personal sins or our own generational bloodline iniquities. Uh, so yeah, if you, I just say, you know, go as, as much as you need to uh, until it manifests. But I always now. So do do we do we go back to you know because like when we went through the financial breakthrough there was quite a lot we had to repent of. So my question is, the manifestation should be now. If you don't see it, what's the time limit that you go back to inquire? I tend to do a lot more inquire than I go to the court. Especially I'm just thinking, oh God, do I need to go to the mobile court or do I stay here? So, um, so it's really to say how soon. Because I'm thinking, Lord, if I've gone, if you've gone through this, it really should be immediate. Mm -hmm. I don't want to sound like a nagging child, but yeah, well, it's 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 a difficult question to answer because it's individualized for you, and how you walk out that that uh, verdict can be a key part of it. So, in essence, you you anytime we repent, and it's from the heart, it's not just from an emotional state of just repentance. Yeah. Anytime we repent. Uh, repentance, uh, teshuva, means a restoration. We're being restored back to our primordial first estate. So it incorporates change into our life. And when we begin to change and when we begin to be a, a governmental ambassador, we speak as a king as, in a creative governmental decree that, 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 that creates what's in the unseen realm. And so we have to look at what, how we, you know, we, we talked about one of the scriptures talk about walking out uh, the, the, the verdict. And so that may be a part of it. Uh, you may have missed something in there that, that through an inquiry of the Lord, you can find the answer to both, how to walk out the verdict, how to, if there's anything else that is legally standing against me, you can find out that through an inquiry. Uh, uh, but that's my point is, uh, I, I, I rarely answer people with what I think you should do because it could be so far from the truth. And now when we're, we're learning about inquire of the Lord, we're bringing that, that, uh, that awesome uh, uh, ability to inquire of the Lord into to play in everything we do. That just brings in a whole new, new game to me that I can give you some wisdom it may not have anything to do with what, what uh, it may work for me. And that's why I hesitate a lot in giving how to do something in the course, because it may not be God's answer for you. I'd rather point you to Jesus Christ and say, inquire of him and let him give you the answer rather than uh, me. It's, it goes back to the old church age mentality uh, where, where, you know, people would come to a prophet or they would come to an apostle or a pastor or a teacher or whatever for the answers. And there's wisdom, wisdom in a multitude of counsel. But I always, I want to point people away from me to give them an answer, answer. In other words, I don't want to be an idol to you that you come to me and for your answer every time. I'm going to point you to Jesus Christ every time you, anybody has a question. And I've done that thousands of times. <laughs> and so don't get triggered on me. 
I'm not being mean. I'm just pointing you to Jesus Christ to inquire of him for, for your individual answer that can be uh, uh, much different than what I think should happen. But that's good, Terry, because remember, thank you. Remember uh, Jacob and Esau? There's two nations, you know, Rebecca. There's two nations within you. And I, I couldn't give her that revelation. That's, that's more than likely. So an inquiry of the Lord is the way to go. Uh, rather than so much an inquiry. I can teach you protocols and guidelines all day long. And, uh, uh, but that's my answer. Natalie, you have a, have a question? Dr. Natalie Olson with us? Oh, now? call me Natalie, Terry. Call me. That's what Jesus calls me, Natalie, okay? <laughs> okay. He calls, me, he calls me Terry, too, so I understand again. <laughs> well, more of a, a comment, something that I've learned over the years is, that nothing should ever take the place of our communicating with Jesus Christ. Um, um, no court, the courts of heaven were not designed to uh, uh, replace our intimacy and our talking to the Lord. Yeah. And what I found out is in my personal time is where he tells me about me. I don't go to the courts to find out, you know, <laughs> about you know, we'll work with Anna, but she cut her hair too thick. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay. So um, um, with that, a lot of times the things that I find out with Jesus is what's leading me into the courts anyway. I'm talking about the things that I have, doors that I have opened, things that I need to correct about myself normally are the basis for the accusations or legal rights that the enemy is using against me. So nothing, not even the courts, should be a replacement for our talk, for our face-to-face, -face and for those who go there, face-to-face -face time, you know, uh, <laughs> I don't know how to call it, what, what the words, essential, whatever you want to call it, nothing can take the place of that, not even yes. the courts, and, and again, when you have that one-on-one -on -one time, especially face-to-face with him. I'm talking about personal, you and him sitting down and, and <laughs> that real intimacy. A lot of times the things that you're going to court for will be eliminated as you begin to deal with you because mm -hmm. the courts is not a slot system. It's not a casino where I go put in a prayer token and sling. I get, <laughs> you know, give me an answer. Give me, I need to know where the money is coming. Give me an answer. It doesn't work like it that. Work. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you guys know uh, Natalie. Uh, she works with uh, Ron Horner, who's written a ton of books. And Natalie has some wonderful books, too. Uh, and Ron Horner does as well. He's, he uh, teaches a lot about the courtrooms of heaven. I love his writings. He's, he's awesome. And Natalie, we just connected here a couple of weeks ago, right? And uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. awesome, awesome, amazing ministry going on there. And over in where, North Carolina? I'm in South. He's in North. Okay. Okay. Well, good. Y'all connect with her. Uh, what's your, what's the books you got coming out? One I really liked was, was related. Healing uh, okay. Court. Well, you, if you go to Ron's book, of course, the one that I co-written with him is the Courts of Healing. Courts of Healing. Um, and me, myself, because I'm in, in uh, the type of ministry I have, holistic health ministry or healing ministry, um, my very first one, Terry, is going to be accessing heaven through your imagination. That's first, because a lot of people at the very beginning have a hard time even, how do I get to not just courts, but heaven in general? And then from there, we go into what I call heaven's hospital, which, Terry, that's another whole hour <laughs> talking about heaven's hospital or uh, if you put it in the courtroom text, it would be the courts of healing. But because of my profession, it's heaven's hospital and accessing what heaven has for your healing. But we use the imagination in a sense, godly imagination to be able to ascend to uh, heaven's hospital. And man, we're seeing awesome healings that are taking place because of inquiring of the great doctor. And that's awesome you, you're talking about that. But Heaven's Hospital, we actually go in and talk to Jesus about the medical condition 
we get the download for what's going on with their bodies and <laughs> we find out from the Lord what that individual needs to do in order to fix their body. And it has been amazing. And all we're doing is talking to Jesus. That's yes, it. Man. That's <laughs> awesome. We'll have to get you on a webinar. We'll, we'll go over that uh, soon if you are, are mm -hmm. willing. And uh, so, yeah, it's been good. I've got to get off of here. I've got 30 minutes to get ready for the next deal with Nina Hayden. And, uh, and so uh, that's a private one with, with a small group of people, legislators uh, dealing with some of the stuff we're, we're dealing with. We're going to the next level and we can't, you know, we're, we're in this uh, learning phase. It's almost like, to me, it's like learning how to ride a bicycle and courtrooms of heaven is you're going to fall off the bike a couple times and uh, bruise your knee, scrape your knee, whatever, but get back up on the bicycle. It's, and what will happen is it, it, it'll seem really hard in initial phases of that. But as you learn, you know, and uh, mistakes are built into the process of learning, right? You will become uh, like the courts of heaven and governing creation are second nature to you and it's just a lifestyle. And so I'm beginning to, to operate in that lifestyle where I am, I use 1 Corinthians 6 a lot where it says, don't you know you'll judge the angels and judge the world? Well, that's a walking courtroom. That's a walking legislative judicial sun that you've come into that is available to whosoever will. If you'll go through the processes of, of uh, uh, holiness and purity and righteousness becoming as he is so in this world, that you'll become that place where he will entrust you to govern creation, that you'll judge, you'll have your own court. You'll li be living a courtroom lifestyle, a governing lifestyle. And that's what, uh, uh, what's so fun about this, even though a lot of us are beginning, I feel like I'm just beginning uh, touching the very surface of, of the depth of the courts of heaven and, and sonship and our identity and authority. But, but uh, you know, as you have to start somewhere. And I started at the very beginning knowing nothing. And, and so it's a place where we can all learn, we can all grow. Don't be afraid of it. Uh, just begin to inquire of the Lord, what can I do in the courts rooms of heaven? How can I deal with this? And I, I love that concept more than anything right now so it's key it's huge uh and we need to to purify i guess purify the courts of heaven remove the defilement of going out of selfish motives and self-will the government of self-will so i think it's going to be incredible uh what we do uh have walk in a fear of the lord where we can begin to judge righteously and uh, so that's i want to leave you with that and I sure appreciate you guys coming tonight. And uh, uh, I don't know what we'll do uh, next week. We'll try to get one in while I'm down in Florida. We're going down there, Timothy Benz, Orlando uh, area. We'll be in uh, Jacksonville and uh, uh, Ocala. And uh, for the next 10 days, I think. So starting this coming weekend, next weekend. So bless you guys. Thank you so much for joining. Inquire of the Lord, how about just a little bit and see what happens. And don't give up. Don't stop with the first impression. Inquire again like David. He inquired two or three times. And inquire until you get the specific directions. And if he changes his direction, uh, then what he said at first, that's okay. That's good. Don't ever get locked into, well, he told me this one time, and I'm going to use that the rest of my life. Don't go there because you'll open the door for a spirit of religion to come in. It'll hook you back into tradition. Amen. So bless you guys. We'll see you and look for the recording to come out tomorrow. You're welcome to share with anybody and everybody and listen again. So bless you guys. Thanks, everyone. Shalom. Shalom. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, bless you guys. See you next time. Bless you. Shalom. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. Terry. Thank you. It's Thanks, honor. Terry. Hey, Rick. Good to see you there, buddy. <laughs> yeah, good to see you guys. Bless you. See Bless you. Time. Okay.